Hey everyone, this is Scott here again with a new video to help you learn how to trade, invest, and master your finances so you can apply that knowledge in the real world and multiply your money. And in today's video, I wanted to talk about implied volatility and why it is the main reason that I only sell options and why you should too. And if that sounds interesting to you, then please do me a huge favor and subscribe to my channel and hit the like button on this video. And so before we're getting started here, as always, if you are interested in taking a deep dive into options, options trading, and stock market investing, please check out my Skillshare courses. I've been teaching on Skillshare for over a year at this point. Skillshare is a lot like YouTube, except the content on that platform is geared solely towards the purpose of education in the form of online classes. And in my courses, you will see a lot of the detailed research and analysis that I've done using real stock market data, spreadsheets and graphs, and even computer programs that I have written to help simulate and prove the concepts that I am teaching. And I've dropped some links to some of the more introductory courses of mine in the description of this video below. Now you will need a premium level membership to the Skillshare platform to watch my courses, but if you do sign up for that kind of membership with the links provided in the description of this video, you'll get an absolutely free two week trial. And during that time, you can watch all my courses for free. And then after your trial has ended, it's only gonna cost you a few dollars a month to maintain that membership, and you'll gain access to all the future courses that I have planned going forward. Skillshare is super affordable, and you'll get a ton of value out of it. So if you're interested, please check out those links and join the thousands of students that have already taken my classes. And so now diving in here and talking first about what exactly is implied volatility, and I've talked about this many times in my Skillshare courses, and I've mentioned it a few times in my other YouTube videos, but just to say it again here, Implied volatility, conceptually speaking at least, is simply the current market's expected range for a particular stock over a certain period of time. And if you were to go look up the implied volatility for a particular stock, you will likely see that it's quoted as a percentage and on a one-year basis. So for example, what this means is if you were to look up the implied volatility for Apple, let's say, you might see that it's 30%. And so what this would mean is, as of right now at least, the market is currently expecting one year from today, Apple stock to be either up or down from where it's currently trading at by 30%, right? So like I said, this is an expected range either up or down of a particular stock at some point in the future. And even though implied volatility is typically quoted on a one-year basis, you can convert it or look it up for any time frame that you want. So for example, you could look up the implied volatility or the expected range for Apple stock just for today, and you might see that it's maybe two or 3%. Now where things get interesting and starting to reveal the reason why I only sell options is because when you compare implied volatility to historical volatility, you will see a significant difference. And historical volatility is a much more simple concept because it is simply the volatility of the stock in the past. And that number can actually be quantified because we have the data to actually look at. So you can go into your trading platform, pull up the charts for Apple, look at the past month, for example, and see the actual historical volatility, the actual range of that stock over the past one month. And so like I was saying, it's the comparison, specifically the difference between implied volatility and historical volatility that is the reason why I only sell options. And specifically what you will find is the vast majority of the time, the implied volatility or the expected range of a stock is usually much greater than the actual historical volatility or the actual range of that stock over that period of time. So for example, if we were to rewind time one month, let's say, go back in time one month and at that point in time, look at the implied volatility for Apple over that next month. And you might see, for example, that the implied volatility for Apple over that next month is let's say up or down by 8%. And so now, fast forwarding back to today, if you were to now look and see what Apple actually did over the past month, you might see that it only actually increased in price by 3%. And so if the market was actually expecting Apple to move either up or down by 8%, but the actual move of Apple was only 3% over the past month, then the implied volatility, the expected range, was greatly overstated. And based on the research that I have both seen and conducted myself, this happens over 80% of the time. Now, one question you might be asking at this point is, why is the implied volatility, the vast majority of the time, so greatly overstated? And I have two answers for that. The first of which has to do with human psychology and human nature in that it is typically normal for humans to over-exaggerate the likelihood of something happening or not happening. 
right? For example, if you've ever given a presentation in school, perhaps prior to that presentation, you were very nervous and you were going through all the worst case scenarios. And as a result, you were expecting to not do well. But assuming you actually prepared for the presentation and you were somewhat ready, chances are you actually did much better than what you thought, what you expected. And the stock market's expectation of what a stock might do over a certain period of time is no different. So because people tend to over-exaggerate the outcome of a certain event, either good or bad, this is why the expectation of what a stock might do over a certain period of time tends to also be overinflated. And the second reason why implied volatility is usually overstated has to do with option pricing. And this is specifically related now to why option selling is so advantageous. And specifically, in order to price an option, you do need a variety of factors like the stock price, the time until expiration, interest rates, etc. And then along with that, you also need the implied volatility. And so if implied volatility is directly used in pricing an option, and if selling naked options specifically, just selling a call or selling a put carries undefined risk, meaning your losses are theoretically infinite, then these sellers of options are gonna to wanna to charge a little bit of extra premium to take on that undefined risk. And that extra premium to make this risk worth it gets factored into the implied volatility, meaning it's in the seller's best interest to overinflate the expected range of a stock over a certain period of time so that they can sell the option for more money. And that's because as implied volatility expands, so do the prices of options, they will increase. And then conversely, as implied volatility contracts, the prices of options will decrease. So like I said, it's in the best interest of option sellers to price options such that the implied volatility is a bit overinflated, so the prices of those options are a bit overinflated. And so this leads me to the most important, fundamental, ultimate point of this video, and I basically just said it already, is that options are almost always overpriced. And just like with any asset, when an asset becomes overpriced, what do you wanna do with it? Or what should you do with it? You should sell it, right? This ties in perfectly to the age old saying that you should buy low and sell high. And options are no different. If the vast majority of the time, if implied volatility is overinflated, therefore overinflating the prices of options, then you should be selling them. And as an options trader myself, and as somebody who utilizes this approach to trading options, I can definitely speak to the efficacy of this strategy. And I can say that yes, on average, as you continually sell options over time, this is a very profitable strategy. But the key thing to keep in mind here is that this does work, but on average, not every trade, not every option you sell is going to be a winner, of course. Like I said, about 80% of the time, implied volatility is overstated, but that still leaves 20% of the time where it's not. And those would be the situations where the actual move of the stock over that period of time was actually much greater than what was expected. And in those situations, as an option seller, chances are you're gonna lose money, and that's just how the game is played. You obviously cannot win or make money on every single trade, but I would much rather be on the side of things where 80% of the time I do have an edge versus only 20% of the time. And I will say also there are other key mechanics that go into this kind of strategy. You cannot simply be selling options left and right blindly and expect to make money long term. You need to have proper risk management, proper trade sizing, proper entry and exit criteria and things like that in order for all of this to actually work. And I will of course make videos on that stuff going forward and you can check out my Skillshare courses as well to see an in-depth look at those mechanics. But the bottom line core component of this strategy which allows it to work that's the point of this video, of course, is the fact that yes, the vast majority of the time, implied volatility, the expected range of a stock over a certain period of time is overstated. And so that is where the edge lies in options trading. And so if you are selling options specifically, then you'll be the one who's actually taking advantage of it. And so that concludes this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And again, if you are interested in taking a deep dive into options, options trading, and stock market investing, please check out my Skillshare courses. Links in the description of this video. And lastly, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, drop a comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And make sure those notifications are turned on. I'll be dropping new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and you don't want to miss out. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.